In this HVAC training video, we're going over how to recover the refrigerant out of this air conditioning system. And we're gonna be using a self-contained recovery machine. And we're gonna be hooking the hoses from the unit to the machine and from the machine to the tank. And then we're gonna be vacuuming the recovery hose setup instead of doing the air purging process. So remember that we have to get the air out of these hoses before we allow the refrigerant from the system into the hoses because that will just push air into the recovery tank and we don't wanna do that. Now we're gonna be using the valve core removal tools at the ports in order to remove the restriction over there so that we have a quick and effective recovery process. We're also gonna make sure that we don't overfill this recovery tank. And if you wanna learn more about HVAC and the step-by-step -step procedures that we use in the field, such as pressure testing, vacuum pumping, recovery, charging, airflow measurements, and troubleshooting, make sure to check out our second edition, Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. So this is available over at Amazon True Tech Tools and at acservicetech.com. Now let's get into it. The first two things that we're gonna do are to identify the refrigerant that's in this tank and identify the refrigerant that's in that system over there. And so on the rating plate of the system, you see that it says R22 and that there's 91 ounces that were factory charged into the system. Now over here, what we're gonna need to do is this is not connected yet and you should have an identification tag on it uh, or you know marked on the neck of the tank. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is just to double confirm this we're gonna screw this on right here. This is already turned on. So we're at zero PSI, as you can see right here. We're gonna open up the, the tank and you see that we're measuring 127.9 PSI. And so you see that we are reading 73.5 degrees. This recovery tank has been outside for about an hour. Um, and it was in the service truck before that. It's morning time, so the Temperature shouldn't have changed too, too much. It was around 70 for a while, now it's 73. And what we can do is look on our PT chart for 127.9 PSI. So it's right around here, as you can see. This is our refrigerant charging book. And in this case, you could use the NAVAC app for this in order to get the saturated temperature to show up right here. We can just sign in as guest, turn the Bluetooth on. And as soon as the app connects to this, you can assign a refrigerant to this pressure. And so in this case, we already have R22 selected. And so it's saying it's about 73 degrees as a saturated temperature. Uh, but right here you see R22 PSI is 125.7, 72 degrees. So if it was a little bit higher, that would match up with 73 degrees as our Fahrenheit temperature. So if this was R410A in the bottle or R32 or R454B, the pressure would be a lot higher in this recovery tank. So that's how we know that we have R22 in here is because the PT chart matches. When you have a different refrigerant that's in the tank, you could use a refrigerant analyzer instead. Now we're gonna check the refrigerant weight to make sure that we don't overfill this recovery bottle. We'll go ahead and close this, disconnect our wireless probe. The next thing that we're gonna do is turn the scale on and we're gonna go ahead and put the recovery tank on that. So we wanna make sure it's zeroed out. So if we needed to zero it, what we could do is just press the clear button right here. And so you do see it's reading zero pounds. And so we'll add our refrigerant tank. And you see that we are at 40, 42 pounds, say seven ounces or so. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is we need to look at the neck of the recovery bottle now. There's two things we need to identify on the recovery tank. One is the water capacity. And so that's 47.6 pounds of liquid water that can fill this tank. We need to convert that from liquid water to liquid R22. We also need to know the empty tear weight. So that's 28.1 pounds. And so we also need to know the specific gravity of R22. And we're gonna calculate that at 120 degrees. And so just to be safe. And so right here, you can see the formula water capacity. So that was 47.6 times 0.8 times the specific gravity and for R22 we're going with 1.1 right for R22 and so in our calculation here you see 1.1 and then we're going to have to add what would be the uh, tear weight and so on the tear weight on this one's 28.1 and that'll give us the max weight and then we're going to compare that to the actual weight in the tank in order to see how much uh, capacity we have left so once again the formula is water capacity times 0.8 times the specific gravity of the refrigerant in the tank. You take that and then you add the tear weight that gives you the max weight. So here we go, we got 47.6 times 0.8 
and that equals 38.08. So we take 38.08 times 1.1, and we equal 41.888. Then we take 41.888 plus 28.1, and that equals 69.98. So let's just say 70 pounds. And so we take 70 pounds minus 42 pounds and six ounces, and we're left with 27 pounds, 10 ounces. And so that's how much refrigerant we can still put in this tank. So uh, basically 91 ounces is what's in the system, plus maybe a little extra. And so we would be fine and we would not be overfilling this recovery tank. Now let's move on to the connection at the system ports. We're gonna use our VCRT in order to remove this valve core. So this valve core will act like a restriction if we don't remove this prior to recovery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snug this back part up, snug this right here, and then we're going to tighten this in. So now I just fell into the groove of the valve core, so I should be holding on to it presently. The other thing is I might just loosen this just a little bit. Um, let's see here. All right, now I'm in, I'm gonna go ahead and keep turning. The reason for loosening this just a little bit is to make sure that the valve cord does not get hung up on the way out. All right, so I just felt it click again, and that means that it's no longer riding on the inside of the, the threads right there. And so I'm gonna keep turning it as I'm coming out. I wanna see if I can not lose the valve core. There you go. So there is the valve core. So this would act as a restriction if you left it in there. So it's really going to slow down that process. Now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, let's see if I could not lose it on the way out. So now we're going to hook our hoses up. I'm going to now re-snug these down just a little bit. I just want to make sure that I don't have a accidental leak at that location. And I'm going to snug this down. Same thing with right here. In fact, I'm going to move my position again. Next, we'll attach our recovery hoses. So this one is going to be attached to a Y fitting at the recovery machine. And the same with this one. So we're just going to attach this in, make sure it's snug. We've already torqued down our filter dryer and we just put a cap on the end just to avoid any moisture from getting in. We're going to remove that and we're going to put our Y fitting right here. And so we're going to be able to, without any manifold or without any T, we're going to have a good flow into the recovery machine by using this Y. And so it's a 3 8 by 3 8 by quarter inch. And these hoses right here are quarter inch on that side and there are 3 8 on this side. So if you can see, uh, this one is a little bit bigger and that's the whole point is to lessen the restrictions for when we attach it right here on the Y fitting. It's also really nice to have these caps because when you're done, you can seal off the port so you don't get any, uh, any dirt or debris into these Y fittings. Also the, the hoses come with little end sections to be able to be able to close those off as well. We're gonna take our smaller hose and we're gonna connect that from here to some fittings connected over at the tank. And I'll show you that once we get up there. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect here. This hose has quarter inch on both sides instead of the other hoses that we used right here that had three eighths on one side and quarter inch on the other side. We wanna use as short a hose as possible from the discharge of the recovery machine to the tank because there's no way to recover the refrigerant in that hose after the whole recovery process is complete. The next two fittings we're gonna need are a T without any valve core in the end and a VCRT without the uh, rod on the end. And so you can either connect into the liquid side or the vapor side of the recovery tank for recovering saturated refrigerant out of a existing system, uh, we could just uh, mount it right here onto the, the blue side. Remember at the very beginning, you might be pumping liquid and then, uh, then you're gonna be pumping saturated after you're uh, recovering a decent amount. And then after that, you're just gonna be pumping vapor that's left in the system into this tank. So we typically just choose to connect over onto the blue side of the recovery tank anytime that we are uh, filling it for a residential system with a standard uh, setup. But there's a, a bunch of different setups that you can 
uh, and you can do with a recovery tank. You can even flip this upside down and connect uh, to the vapor side if you wanted to access to the liquid, but you can check out a whole other video we have on that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and connect our VCRT onto the top. Now, we're connecting this on so that we can valve off the vacuum on the setup. We can go ahead and connect our recovery hose right in here. Next, we'll mount a second VCRT over here, and this one will be to valve off the vacuum gauge so it's not in the setup the whole time. And so we can go ahead and uh, connect right here. So this is a female to female connector for the vacuum gauge. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to attach our vacuum hose to the VCRT here. And so this is a half inch uh, vacuum hose. And so you have a quarter inch adapter right here that's screwing into the VCRT. And you could get away with uh, a much smaller hose in this, uh, but this will make it faster for the vacuum process. And then we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this cap. And we're gonna take the other part of that vacuum hose and attach it right here. Now this is a 3 8 connector. So this is a 3 8 connector by half inch hose by quarter inch connector on the other side. Now we need to do several things before we do the vacuum. One is we need to open this up so we have a clear pathway through all the tubes. The recovery machine does not have to be on for this, but it does need to be in the recover position. And then we need to turn our valve to the open position on the vacuum pump, and we need to turn on the vacuum gauge. And so after that's on, we can go ahead and turn on the vacuum pump. And so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and close and then reopen these valve cores because there could be a little bit of air stuck in them. So now we're just checking to see if it's holding a vacuum and then we're gonna break the vacuum. It doesn't matter if we break this vacuum with uh, this handle by opening this handle up or by opening the uh, VCRT handles at the system ports. As you can see, we're holding around uh, 420 microns. Hopefully you can still see that, but it's reading 413 microns. We're gonna turn the recovery machine on just to see the display, and it should read an inch in HG. You see it's reading 28 inch HG. We're gonna go ahead and valve this off, and then I'm going to open up these two valves down here. And so here we go. And then we can open up this handle, and we're ready to do our recovery. I can go ahead and disconnect our vacuum hose. I can also disconnect our vacuum gauge. And what we'll do is we'll put caps here and here. We don't need caps here, but it's just in case we accidentally bump the valve core removal tools. So that's it, ready to go. Now you can monitor the refrigerant weight going into the tank here. We wanna stay in the highest recovery speed. We also have the indoor fan motor on in order to provide heat across the indoor coil. We've got these valves in the open position, so we can go ahead and start because that handle is in the fully open position. So now we've shut this off because we've reached zero PSI. And on some recovery machines, you wanna close this valve off before turning this off. Uh, but this machine is capable of just holding the pressure downstream. What we're really looking for is to see if this pressure will end up rising due to any flashing uh, refrigerant liquid. And so if you don't have a heat source at the inside of the building, like on the evaporator coil, like we do here when we have the fan running, then it's very likely that you're gonna rise very quickly uh, in your pressure. And also just note, if you don't have a digital display, you're gonna need some other means of measuring pressure. So if you're using a different recovery machine, you're most likely gonna wanna mount um, your wireless probes right on the ends of those, or the sides of those VCRTs over there. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna uh, wait and see how high this rises. We're gonna give it like maybe five, 10 minutes. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn that recovery machine on again in order to recover this remaining refrigerant. It's not gonna be much, but it does add up. So we're just gonna go ahead and wait a few minutes.
Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and it's risen to 16 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on once again. Now we can wait another 10 minutes and see if it rises again. If it doesn't rise and it holds at 0, 0.0, then we're gonna go ahead and turn that recover machine over to the purge function and we're gonna recover the rest of the refrigerant that's actually inside the recovery machine right now. So it's been 10 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and turn this to the purge, turn it on again. So we don't want to pull it down into negative too much because it might suck air from any small leak in the hoses. As well, we don't want to recover uh, down below, say zero PSI on this unit because we don't know if the unit has a refrigerant leak or not. And so that's, that's all we need to do here. We can just go ahead and turn this on again if we wanted to, just for the little bit of refrigerant that's in the inside. But what you're going to notice is over here on the scale, we've recovered an additional about 10 ounces from the inside of this recovery machine with the purge function. Uh, that's a significant amount. When we first recovered refrigerant out of the unit, um, when we turned it off and waited 10 minutes to see if the pressure rose, we saw that it rose to about 11 uh, PSI and we turned it on and we recovered another four ounces out of the system. And so actually what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, turn this uh, system back on again to recover this small little bit of refrigerant that's now flashing from a liquid to a vapor. So that's it. So the only thing that's gonna have refrigerant in it is this hose right here. And so there's no way to, to recover this refrigerant on this section. And so we're just gonna to have to end up purging that. Just make sure that your handle is shut. And what we'll do is we'll actually do it over here instead of at the recovery machine. So it's not a crazy amount. You gotta remember that at the end of your recovery process, you just have vapor. Uh, so you do wanna have a short hose, but you are gonna have to just uh, open this up after you're done. So after this is closed, we can go ahead and remove our T setup. Now it's important to note that some recovery machines may not be vacuum rated, uh, but this one is, so that's why we pulled a vacuum on the hose setup, and I just wanted to show the process of that. Now you're also gonna notice that we didn't recover over, say, five pounds of refrigerant from the system, and the refrigerant weight did change once we added the hoses to it, but we still monitor it anyway, uh, just the, the total maximum, just to make sure that we don't go over, because you never know if a system's overcharged, if you are close to the max weight in the recovery tank. So that's it, we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect here. Now, if you're gonna be reusing this line set during a replacement, make sure to put tape over the ends after you tubing cut it, uh, just to avoid any moisture from getting in the tubing. Remember, your vacuum pump is there to remove the air and the moisture from the inside of the tubing so it doesn't mix with your new refrigerant oil. So I hope this video on refrigerant recovery has helped, and if you wanna learn more about HVAC and the step-by-step -step procedures that we use in the field, make sure to check out our second edition, Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, that's available over at Amazon True Tech Tools and over at acservicetech.com. Also, make sure to check out some of the free resources we have over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.